are victims of scams greedy? How can you tell if something is a scam? What makes people susceptible to getting scammed? Before we get started, welcome Earthlings to Redditamin, a channel dedicated to popular and trending topics as well as tricks and tips to manage your daily life and relationships. Click like and subscribe and I promise you won't be abducted by aliens while you sleep. Per a Reddit post on subreddit r slash scams. I got scammed for $2,500 on a fake eBay website. I just got scammed for $2,500, and my soul is destroyed. I can't believe this happened to me, I never thought it would, some seller I messaged on the Facebook marketplace, emailed me a link to a fake eBay website to buy this too good to be true Mustang, and I stupidly fell for it. When I went to checkout, the only way to pay was through eBay gift cards, I found it odd, but because the website looked so convincing, I thought it must have been some sort of safe way of payment. After going to the store and buying $2,500 worth of eBay cards, I put them in at the checkout and hit enter. I emailed the guy and told him I was done, and that I would be over there to get the car this Thursday, he then sent a reply, saying that he would have someone drive the car to my house instead, only now for whatever reason did I become really suspicious. I contacted eBay, and they confirmed it was a scam. I truly hate myself for falling for this, and I hope that Vistar can help me get that money back. Warning to anyone who receives a link to eBay from an outside source, make sure there's a www on the website link and that you're able to sign into your own account. Comments in response to OP's experience are. My wife used to work as a bank manager and she dealt with people falling for all sorts of scams. She said they would tell customers they were being scammed, beg them to not send money and they would get angry with the bank employees because they were causing them to lose money. In one case years ago a customer was sending $40,000 to Nigeria. When the employees begged him to stop, that he was being scammed he became irate and said they were standing between him and $4 million. My wife outright refused to send it and begged him to think it through. They checked his account. He had left, went to another branch that transferred the funds. In another case a young woman was sending $10,000 to Spain for a car which was being shipped to her for free. They begged her not to send the money, but all she would talk about is the great deal she was getting. They told her that if she could not produce the title in 30 days, the auto loan would convert to an unsecured personal loan at a much higher rate. Two months later her mother showed up to pay off the loan and told my wife she had been scammed and thanked her for trying to stop her. I'm serious, my wife could write a book on all the crazy shit that happens in banks. Like the two women that got in a fight with tire irons in the lobby. Or the guy who crapped a massive amount of diarrhea all over a lobby chair, then walked out to his car leaving a trail, got in and drove away. Or the unemployed guy in his 20s who rolled a safe welded to a hand truck dolly. In the safe was over $100,000 in cash. Honestly, what gave it away that it was a scam, beside the confirmation from eBay? For me, it was the need to pay for a freaking big-ass car with $2,500 in eBay gift cards. I'm pretty sure you didn't log into that website. You have to log into UC eBay. That should have been another red flag. The price of the car was the bait the scammer used to make you throw common sense out the window. This is how scams work. The victim is focused on what he is about to gain only. Seriously, anytime someone wants you to use gift cards as payment, run and don't look back. OP, and all those like him or her, should first learn something about conducting safe payments over the internet. It happens to the best of us. These psychopaths leech on our needs, it's just being human, it doesn't mean one is dumb or whatever. Shame is on the psychopath. Note. On eBay you have to log in to pay, here you didn't. eBay uses PayPal as well. Like you said, if it's too good to be true, it's a lie. Live and learn. Life lessons can be hard, soul-destroying and expensive. This didn't have to happen to OP. Technically anyone can fall for a scam, it's no reflection on your intelligence, but if you know what to look out for, you're less likely to be taken in. If you have been a victim, don't be ashamed to speak out. I'm proud of OP for sharing his story. This is how we help others not to be victims of scams in the future. Like listening to the scam baiters on YouTube, educate yourself and your loved ones on how to spot a scam. Scams come in different forms. They may call you on the phone, send you a letter, text you, or send you an email. Some may come to your door. 
They may know your name, your age, address and what businesses you frequent. They particularly target the elderly who are perceived as having more money and being less technology literate. They also are home a lot and can be more trusting than younger people. Remember, most seniors aren't on YouTube or Reddit where these scams are being exposed. They may ask personal questions like, do you live alone or what is your age? They use flattery like, you sound so much younger than your age. They may use scare tactics or tell you they will lose their job if you don't go along with their request. They may even warn people to be cautious of scams like they're protecting you. They may have a thick foreign accent or not. Keep in mind, they are getting more sophisticated. I consider it a form of terrorism along with theft. When some offer comes out of nowhere be suspicious. If it sounds too good to be true, it is. Americans particularly are still too trusting, and we like to get a good deal. That beautiful young girl on Instagram that lives in Berlin and wants to marry you is using pictures of someone else she's found online. That guy with the thick accent claiming a car belonging to you was found on the south border of Texas with illegal drugs in it is not working for the Social Security Administration. You are not going to have your social security number cancelled or be sent to jail. Anyone you don't know asking you to purchase gift cards and read the numbers on the back is scamming you. Emails sent with logos from familiar companies like Chase or Home Depot may not be legit, so ask someone you trust before you proceed to send money or give out your account numbers. Send me a message through my YouTube channel or to my email, and I will assist you if I can. Don't click on links or attachments in an unsolicited email, even to unsubscribe. Go to the company's own website. Hang up on cold callers and ignore cold texts. Better yet, let unknown calls go to voicemail. If someone calls you and says they work for Microsoft or Apple for example, get their full name and call the company to find out if they called you. Don't share personal information or information online that could help a criminal like you're going on vacation for two weeks or your daughter's name. Again, when in doubt, ask someone you trust such as a friend, family member, law enforcement, clergy or call a local senior services helpline. If you hear about someone like OP being scammed show empathy and don't shame them. They're victims and they've been blindsided. Keep the blame on the criminal scammer that deceived them. Tell everyone you can about these scams, particularly older people. Show YouTube videos to grandparents and parents from scam baiters like Kitboga or Papa Monkey. They keep it clean, and you can hear how calls with scammers go. Remember, there are many types of scams. Religious, political, governmental, legal, medical and so on. The goal is to steal your money by tricking you. Those who tend to fall for scams according to research may even be skeptical at first, but they saw the potential for high benefits as outweighing the risks. Are they greedy? Yes, many are. They are also not usually informed about the different types of scams that are out there. They're gullible. At some point, we've all been taken advantage of in some way. An elderly gentleman in Phoenix, Arizona was recently the victim of an Amazon scam. He was told he had a refund of $50 coming to him. He let the scammer take over his computer who withdrew $4,300 from his bank account. So imagine a scammer taking advantage of the senior citizen. Well, it happened recently when Henry got a phone call. And he said, uh, we're with Amazon and uh, uh, we're about to renew your account. I said, no, I don't want to renew. Well, you're entitled to a $50 refund. And that got your attention. So I said, okay. The scammer convinced Henry to go to his computer and to log on to his Wells Fargo bank account. Once there, Henry typed in $50 for his so-called credit, but right in front of Henry's eyes, the $50 changed to $5,000. He said, oh, you put in $5,000. I said, no, you put it in. He said, no, you put it in. I said, okay. He said, uh, we got to get that money back or I'll be in a lot of trouble. What this senior citizen didn't know is that he had inadvertently allowed the scammer to remotely access his computer while he was on his bank account. I said, oh, okay, so I put in my, all my information and they remotely controlled everything. Henry says he actually saw the cursor moving around on his screen and before he knew it, $4,300 out of that $5,000 was fraudulently removed from his account. Tell us if you have been the victim of a scam or know someone who has.
Please share this video with others who are vulnerable to scams. Drop a comment, click like and subscribe to be notified when I post a new video. Stay awesome. Dites-nous si vous avez été victime d'une arnaque ou connaissez quelqu'un qui l'a fait. Veuillez partager cette vidéo avec d'autres personnes vulnérables aux escroqueries. Déposez un commentaire, cliquez sur j'aime et abonnez-vous pour être averti lorsque je publie une nouvelle vidéo. Restez génial.